Hey guys, we know you've always wanted to go rallying, but you never knew how to get started. And that's why we're here at Broken Motorsports in Union City, New Jersey. We're gonna go inside and meet Bill Petro, the proprietor of this establishment, and Wyatt Knox, an accomplished rally driver and instructor at Team O'Neill. We're gonna find out what it takes to go rallying if you've never done it before, how to prep your car, how to keep it safe, how to get involved in the, uh, the different rally organizations, and just how to do it, how to get a co-driver, all that stuff. That is what we're talking about today on Afterdrive. What do you think of that? So hey, welcome to Afterdrive. Uh, you always wanted to go rallying, but you never knew how to get started. So we assembled a group of people that are gonna help you do that very thing. We are at Broken Motorsports, as I mentioned before, in Union City, New Jersey. Bill Petro's shop. Bill um, is the proprietor of this establishment, as I said. Um, Wyatt Knox, of course, the uh, the rally legend. Um, legend. Le <laughs> Whoa! Ra right. Accomplished a rallyist. Status. Accomplished there you go. rallyist. And uh, Tim O'Neill, uh, instructor still, or are you uh, just doing formerly stuff? instructor? Yeah, I took the last few years off, and now I'm back up in New Hampshire at Tim O'Neill doing some other things. Cool, cool. And also uh, Tim O'Neill alum. Jalopnik uh, associate editor, what are you now? I don't know, writer. Writer, Raphael Orlov, of course, you know him from getting his head shaved by a Ferrari mechanic. Yes. Of course, <laughs> we, we know how that turned out. So, all right, so we're here to talk about how to get started in rallying if you know nothing, maybe if you just know that you wanna do it, you may not know exactly how to get started. So Bill, what do you do here in your shop um, as it relates to rallying? Well, I mean, basically we do everything from basic maintenance to full on rally builds. We do everything from uh, obviously there's a lot of different rally classes so we pretty much have experience in building everything uh, that's out there for rally class there's two different sanctioning bodies we do both mm -hmm. even though they kind of follow the same line the same path but we handle everything we really specialize in these particular classes super production we've crewed for the 2010 national champion the 2011 national champion uh -huh. took a year off last year to handle a couple of things and we're kind of training this gentleman behind us to possibly go for the national championship next year. So, so you've been doing this a while. Obviously, if you're just getting started um, in rallying, you're not gonna be driving something like this no. car behind us. What's, what, Definitely what's not. this STI doing? This is an 07 STI super production car. It's an iteration of a production car. The super end of it is that you get to have all these cool things, anti-lag, launch control, uh, differential controllers, electronic differential controllers. Um, you can, brakes are open, suspension is open. So it's, it's quite a bit further along than what you would do for a beginner car. This particular car with its components and the way it's built and everything is roughly about 100 to 120 grand. 120 grand, so um, probably not the beginner. A I mean, little out of the got, league. Unless you've... Uh, if you have the money, more people power to people you. Yeah, people yeah. definitely do it. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have the money, it's, it's, it's a great class to be in. Super competitive. The production part keeps that kind of within the realm. So everybody's fairly close competition. Okay. Makes it exciting. Cool. So, but in the same rally event, right, you're going to, you, you'll find other classes of cars, right? Yeah. So, so if, you, if you are a beginner, what's a car you might start out with? I had a Fiesta, a brand uh, new Fiesta. Uh, what year? Last year, 2011. Okay. Um, so not really last year, but yeah. Um, that's a great two-wheel drive machine if you're looking for a new car okay. um, to start with. So that's the kind of a step down from this. If your budget is a little, a little bit higher, obviously, than, yeah. than, than grassroots. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If and you, you can if, get one of those basically almost completely prepped from, from Ford Racing? Is that how that works? Well, or it's actually going for Team O'Neill. Yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, um, but I, I mean, I, I, I had gotten some stuff through Team O'Neill. I got the roll cage and some suspension bits and things um, to put on the car. And I basically built it myself, um, minus the cage. Mm -hmm. That has to be done by them um, right. for, for rules purposes and, and things like that. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a fantastic car. It was my first two wheel drive car competing in. Um, I was an all wheel drive turbo guy before that. And I'm still in a two wheel drive car with the 240, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, I like to move around. I like to get different experiences and, yeah. and stuff like that. But 
a two-wheel drive base car, something used, maybe something old, something that somebody already runs that's, you know, just looking to sell and move to a different car, like maybe move up in class or something. There's a lot of different things out there. The old go-to is the GTI. Well, the, the new Fiesta is like the new version of what the original Mark II Golf was. Right. You okay. know, people love the old Volkswagen Mark II GTIs. Yeah. They're still great little rally cars. They're just getting harder to find parts for, harder to find body shells. They don't look as modern and everything else. All rust and So away. the new Fiesta is basically everything that the Mark II GTI was. Mm -hmm. Right. It's light, it's front wheel drive, it's small, it's compact, it goes around corners like crazy. Um, and they're really not that expensive, so that's why and a lot of people are getting into those. But there's plenty of old stuff around. Yeah, and the Fiestas at this point now are like, what, 2010 they first came out? Yeah. So they're starting to get high in miles, so they're starting to get cheaper and cheaper, so they're kind of almost starting to hit that realm of the GTI. Yeah. yeah. You know? so, but, so if you were going to start out with like a Team O'Neill car, um, that's... that's how, what, like, what would that, what's the package? That, like, what, what Team O'Neill, you've, you've got several different packages. We run the full-on M-Sport prepped uh, Fiesta R2s. Okay. So we're working with Bilstein, we're working with M-Sport, we're working with Ford Racing. So we're getting all of these parts and prepping the cars. Um, so you could show up and buy one if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a very good rental package. So someone like Raph who's been through the school can run around. We just got back from STPR. We had five cars there. Right. None of them were team drivers, really. Yeah, they're all rentals. They're all rentals. Yeah. So, and it depends, you know, do you want to rent one of the R2s, which is sequential dog box craziness, you know, built yeah. race motors and everything else, or you can rent uh, more of a production one, like you know, a, the like R1. Have, like an R1. Uh, what we call the R1, which is a stock Fiesta engine, the regular five-speed transmission. It's got the good suspension, the big brakes and everything, like a super production car. You know, mm -hmm. the internal motor stuff isn't changed, but the suspension's good, the brakes are good, it's got the exhaust, it's got some other goodies. Uh, and you can get into one of those for pretty cheap. So you're looking at different options when you're like, well, do I buy a car that's used? Do I buy a new car? Do I build my own car? Um, buying used rally cars is definitely a good way to go. A lot of people do it. There's, you know, different websites. There's probably 100 rally cars for sale in America right now. Yeah. Um, well, there's like, I mean, I know race junk, but there's, there are others too, right? Special there's stage. Special for stage. rally oh, for specific, rally specific, specific yeah. yeah, there's, stuff. there's, there's specialstage.com. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, there's specialstage.com, which is, um, kind of like our go-to North American rally forum. Um, there's also rally addict. They come up on eBay. Yeah. There's stuff on eBay. Often. And of course now mm -hmm. with Facebook. But the rally community is so close knit. One person puts up one, and then he shares it, and then everybody knows something's for sale. Yeah. It's, it's you know, one of those so. situations where there, there's been a few bad accidents. There's been a few deaths in the U.S. in rally, uh, even in the last 10 years. So the rule book changes fairly frequently. So with every bad accident, somebody gets injured, something else, the rule book changes. So now you've got to have a roll bar bar here, or right. uh, you know, even maybe six years ago, uh, they were very, very different 10 years ago, an old SCCA cage. Yeah. You had bolt-in roll cages, you had wacky tubing diameters, you had wacky tubing thicknesses. Yeah. So yeah. be a little leery. We've had a couple of people up at the rally school. They go through the rally school and they take off. And they're like, oh, I found this rally car. They go buy They spend 10 grand on this thing and then show up at the first race and realize can't they, race. They you're can't done. Get it yeah, you need to redo the whole roll yeah. cage. So that's, that's interesting. I mean, because um, if you're going to get started, so let's, let's actually take that down into the grassroots, right? So yeah. If you were just some guy off the street, right, saying, listen, I want to go rallying, what do I do first? I mean, if, for, in each of your opinions, what's the first, the very first step? What's the very first thing you got to do? The, well, the first thing you got to do is just do some research and see if you're really into it. I mean, we get a lot of people from the city, you know, that are living down here in New York that haven't even driven a car. <laughs> we have, we've had people that don't own cars people. that are like, okay, you know, this rally thing looks cool, and they see it on TV, they watch a couple of YouTube videos, they come up to the rally school, and it's like, okay, what's the, this pedal do? Right. And it's like, oh, well, man. Well, so rally school, so, uh, so, so going up to Team O'Neill, I mean, that, there's it's a... It's a there's great a... starter course, for sure, and <laughs> yeah. if, if you're unfamiliar with anything about rallying, whether it's the cars, or buying a car, or building a car, or looking at cars, and front-wheel drive, or rear-wheel drive, or all, but most people don't know. Yeah. You know, you drive a car around town, and you're like, hmm, oh, I think I'm going to go rallying, I might get a Subaru. Well, the thing is, <laughs> you try a rear-wheel drive car out on dirt. Mm -hmm. You know, try a front-wheel drive car out, you're probably going to find that maybe you're really good at rear-wheel drive, uh, and so maybe something like this BMW would suit you, or, you know, there's a couple of different things. Right. Uh, so you got to get out. If you're thinking about getting into rallying, 
find some gravel roads, you know, borrow a rental car, steal your neighbor's car or something <laughs> and go out and beat on it for a little bit, you know, start pulling ABS fuses and everything else and see, you know, okay, what's it all about? Don't just, you know, look at it on television and say, oh, you know, we're jumping over creeks. This pull, looks cool. Yeah. And just get out there and pull the Wait, ABS fuses. That's the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So wrapped and and you just you were just up at Team O'Neill. So I right. So, so and, I and am you, a city. So yeah. I I, I ain't one of those city. Right. Yeah. So sure. I'm a city kid, and you know, a few months ago, I would have been you know carless and yeah. you know just watching rallying on YouTube and exactly. being like, oh, it does look yeah, good. Yeah, it looks good. Um, anyway, so I know a guy who's a, a co-driver, and so he said he was going up to okay. to O'Neill. So I, I tagged along with him, and we did the one day course. Nice. And so um, so yeah. I, well, now I own a a, a car, which does go on dirt good uh, and so well yeah but you own a baja bug okay yeah so, so it does oh, go yeah. on dirt yeah there you yeah go. He, he actually has not a, quite the normal yeah it's not it's not quite your normal sort of going rally yeah, but it's, it's, yeah. bad. it's pretty yeah bad. but no I, I every time i go and see rally stuff i'm just like well i've got dirt tires like yeah <laughs> i can do <laughs> this bug. which not? is uh which is bad because i don't have a roll cage and yeah. i'm gonna crash into a tree and i'm gonna die yeah um, no <laughs> So yeah, so I did, uh, I did Team O'Neill, and uh, so I did the one day, and uh, so what you get is, uh, the morning you get instruction, which is, you know, I, I didn't really know exactly what it was going to be, but it wasn't anything totally crazy, you know, it's not, it's not secrets, you know, it's anything no. you can read in a book, I mean, it's, you know, how to plot a corner, you know, late apex, yep. nothing extraordinary, you know, don't do too many things with the wheel at one time. No drama. Uh, and then we did, uh, so then we did a few driving things. We did uh, left foot braking, we did a slalom, uh, we did a, uh, a wider slalom, yeah. we did the pendulum turn, the scandy flick, and then we did uh, sort of like the moose test, you know, accident, accident avoidance. avoidance. Yep. And, uh, and we were done by, I think, <laughs> around like four or something, mm -hmm. and then I had to drive back home to Manhattan, so that was good. <laughs> back, to the, uh, back to the big city. Well, you know, so, okay, first pull the ABS fuses well, on your rental car. Wh what there is, there's rally crosses. Yeah. All right, all right. So well, if, let's, you, if you want to go see this right, well, let's get to that first. Wait, I just want to ask, Rap, one more thing. So did you just, did you go right back home and get in the Baja Bug and find a gravel road and start <laughs> Thankfully, my Baja Bug was in the shop. Okay, <laughs> yeah. uh, Because otherwise, <laughs> I would have immediately gone to a road and gone flying off a cliff or something. Yeah. No. Um, no, because yeah, I was very well trained no. by Tiffany. I would have been, oh, I would like, yeah. crazy slide would have been great. Uh, but no, so I drove up in, uh, uh, in my folks' old Prius. So that was very sensible because I... That's know, very tame. It's very know, sensitive. It's very Nobody sensible. Yeah. Kept, me, <laughs> kept me reasonably near the speed limit on the yep. way home. Yep. But okay, so Rallycross, right? So, um, you know, NASA, talk, talking about the, uh, the, SCCA. the uh, SCCA offers it, NASA offers it. These are the, the, the sort of racing sanctioning bodies. You pay right. 50 bucks a year and you yeah. get your little license and you go do it. Exactly, yeah. right. So rallycross seems like a pretty good way to get used to being competitive on the dirt. It's a great it's feeder a great program way. from, you know, if you're out in back roads and you're racing around and you're trying to learn this stuff with trees around you and cliffs and this and rocks and moose and stuff People flying around and police chasing you, it's going to probably end in tragedy. Right. Um, so, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. But rallycross is a very safe place. It's very similar to autocross. It's just on gravel. You can bring your daily driver. You know, any one of the cars in this garage, any one car, of the cars on the right. street out front. Or your pulled it's rental car. With the, uh, with the uh, ABS fuses. Just pull the ABS fuses. Yeah. You got to go, go down to your enterprise, get a, get a rental. Don't tell them. Base get, model. Get the insurance. Lowest model get one. The insurance. Get the insurance. Get the insurance. Don't worry about it. You know, and go out. And there's people that do that. Yeah. I mean. So, well, what do you need? All right. So, is that all? Is that really all it is? A helmet. You just, you just get a helmet. And, and you a lot of times they have loaners, Leave though. the kid's seat in the back. It doesn't matter. They, they, have lo they some, usually have loaner helmets there. So like, you loaner helmets. Need, yeah, yeah, not cars. <laughs> uh, I mean, some, actually, even, some, even some, some regions, SCCA regions, have cars there that you can rent. rent and it's, yeah. You know, it's, uh, we, and we know somebody down in Texas. With, yeah. Um, yeah. Brianne Korn, I mean, she runs a rally cross on her property down in Texas. And she has cars you come and rent. And yeah. they... Somebody rolled one of her cars, I think, three times last year or something like that. I mean, and they just fix them up and, you know, they keep having it and it's cool, you know. I mean, but some regions have that and, you know, but they have loaner helmets. You don't even need a loaner. You know, you don't even need to buy a helmet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could literally just be but a guy it, from the city. It doesn't have to be a full yeah. motorsports yeah, race. Yeah, go rent a car. I don't know just, the exact rating on well, the helmet. Well, that's the thing. Right. Like a motorcycle helmet, I think, is good, really? isn't it? I don't uh, know. Probably not these days. Okay. Yeah, they've kind of 
backed off. I haven't done a that. autocross in a while. Yeah, it's been a long time. But that's really, I mean, that's the as grassroots as you get with, yeah, with this. Yeah, But it's a great way because not only does it teach you some great skills for rally and it gives you a better feel for the car but and everything, it's but it's, it's, it's driving skills. It's driving ability. So whether you're doing it in a rental car or your own car or something that's a little bit modified, ready for a rally cross or even a full-blown rally car. I mean, there's guys that come out and do it. You're getting a little bit of training. You're getting more comfortable with what you're driving with. You're, you're picking up skills even that will suit you at some point in some emergency situation on the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a, it's a good way to learn and kind of develop into something. And probably, like, if you live in a cold place like New York, you, there's mm -hmm. ice racing, too. Right. You there's can ice racing, some of that. Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. They do right. have snow really rally crosses. Yeah, yeah, snow rally crosses. I mean, yeah. it's really about learning car control yeah. in different traction situations. I mean, that's yeah. the... Yeah. So you've been, let's say, all right, so you've been rally, rally crossing for a while yeah. at the local level, at the regional, you know, yeah. SECA or NASA, NASA level. How do you then, so let's say, how do you get into your first rally from there? I mean, what's the, let's say um, you've got the car that you've been rally crossing and you go, okay, well, now I guess I need some Biggest thing you stuff. need, safety stuff, but a co-driver. Okay, well, let's get to the co-driver second. Okay. I, yeah. I know that's a big, rally a very big, yeah. a very big thing. Because yeah, you got to have somebody that's not gonna, you know, that can that can do the notes, and that's not gonna puke in your lap. Yeah, you got to train a buddy. Even while stuff. you're doing rally cross, you could be training someone, that's riding along with you. Yeah. You know, hard right, easy left, whatever to yeah. get to, even though you can see it. And that's one thing too about rally cross that's different from autocross. Not just the surface change, but a lot of times in autocross, they won't let you bring anybody right in the car. Yeah, it's an insurance oh, thing, yeah. whatever. Yeah, rally, rally cross, cross you can load the car up. That's specifically the thing, like. They're, they're, you're there to learn to try to get to a stage maybe one day, so they let you bring people along. So Whether you, they be your co-driver, future co-driver, or girlfriend, yeah. or your mom, you want to scare the hell out of so, your mom or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Can you rent a co-driver? I mean, this is a yes. sort of a, a further up question. but Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you can rent a co-driver. Most beginners uh, don't do that. Right. It's usually a budget yeah. issue yeah. and whatever, but I mean, like this car here, we technically rent a, a co-driver from Ireland. We fly them over every every event, mm -hmm. and you know it's something we do through Broken Motorsports. And we we always the teams that we support, we always provide whatever we need, product or a co-driver. Or if the co-driver can't make it, he gets sick, his plane doesn't make it, I'm finding somebody else. I'm on the phone calling a million people trying to make stuff happen. But you can definitely rent. A co-driver. Right, co if you if you don't know somebody who you yeah. you've brought up with, in yeah, your or if you don't know enough thing. about it to train your buddy to do it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you, know, exactly. you could both fog through it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But well, it would be cool to actually both to have somebody that you're going through it with that you can maybe trade a rally on and split the cost. Yeah. yeah. Also. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, tell me about the the car you're building in the back there. So like that would be sort of, I'm guessing, the next step up from a rally cross car into a rally situation. Yeah, I mean, in particular, I mean, that car previously was just a road car. Um, it had never been rally crossed before. It was actually a shell I had sitting here and a, and a customer called me asking, you know, if I had anything laying around. And mm -hmm. of course I did, usually do from time to time, but. <laughs> of course you did, yeah. Of course I did. Yeah. Stuff uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, on a regular basis, before we did this cage, um, there's uh, a regular rally cross guy, this kid named Jeremy Keck, um, our roll cage builder, and him actually know each other from rally crossing in a particular region upstate New York. And he brought the, cage, brought the car here to have it caged, just like we're doing this car. It's another open light car. Mm -hmm. And he finished his first rally this weekend at STPR. Cool. So, you know, I mean, that's pretty much the progression. You know, usually you just go right into a Subaru like this, or a lot of the rally cross guys have old, you know, all wheel drive original Impreza's. Yeah. yeah. What a lot of people so. do, it's the same idea of starting out, you know, start out two wheel drive, move to an all wheel drive, no turbo, move to an all wheel drive turbo car. Mm -hmm. There's very few cars that can work, but one of the older Subarus, they made those in front wheel drive, they made them in all wheel drive. Blah, blah, blah. So if you got one of those GC8s, maybe even this one, this generation, mm -hmm. could you do it with the bug eye? Yeah, you they do. made front wheel drive one of those? Yeah. No, no front wheel drive. They stopped oh, that. Okay. Last year, front wheel drive in so, Preza was 96. Oh, but okay. so but you, you can still do. You can still put the stuff in. Open light. Yeah, you can make it a front wheel drive car. Yeah. I mean, so you can. You can cage one of those Subaru shells, mm -hmm. put a front wheel drive, no turbo running gear in it with like a two liter. 
Right. Uh, and then maybe you want to put a you know a 2.2 or 2.5 in, and then mm -hmm. at some point you pull it in the all-wheel drive running gear. So right. you do the roll cage in one car, and that could get you from beginner to intermediate to you, you're driving the yeah, same car. You can, you can turn your, that into a car that can so win overall. The, well, you can go the daily driver, money. rally cross, and you then swap up the nose the on that to that. So if you think ahead, you can actually sort of progress through with the same car. Yeah. If the car survives. Subaru is the yeah. only one that you can but really Subaru's go the, front yeah. wheel drive to yeah. all wheel drive to turbo to crazy turbo to yeah. anti lag to monster machine. Yeah. yeah. But when you do the cage, so getting the cage done is that's a big part of what's legal and what's not legal yes. in the in roll the, cage seats belts. Roll, yep. ca roll cage seats belts. So that's basis. Yep. That's the the, the the stuff that's that changes fairly frequently or it doesn't it doesn't they've kind of now kind of come to a common ground with the FIA rulings and stuff like that but there's always progression right. like why I was saying before I mean you know something horrible happens they take a look uh, at everything again the American and, rally you know. organizers used to have their own roll cage rules right. like oh you could do it like this you could yep. do it like that you could do it like that and then there's a couple of accidents the insurance company and everything else so uh, the American rally organizers have now just looked at what the FIA does the guys who organize the WRC yeah and they just cut and paste boom yeah and that's it's the and same, it's, same, it's the same that's the same for rally America and NASA yep. okay. for the most part I mean there are some different rulings for NASA that allow some road race cars to get in um, even stuff like hill climb cars and things like that. But, um, you know, in, in that respect, I mean, NASA is almost an easier and uh, way to get into rally. Um, just because if you are that guy that, you know, went out and spent your money for an STI. Right. And want to go rallying by the, doing the same thing with a cage and everything. NASA. But you don't want to backdate it to like an all just a normally aspirated or two wheel drive car. NASA will allow you to run an all wheel drive turbo car. Um, to a certain point, right. I mean, obviously, but... Well, how much has having to put an FIA roll cage in a car increased the cost or made the complexity level a little bit higher for a newbie? It's really kind of just this bar has to be here. This bar yeah. has yeah. to be there. So this it's just bar going has to, to be somebody, that tubing. It's, it's not any more expensive. Who knows the spec. Yeah, yeah it's not really any more exactly. expensive. It's just yeah. It's different. just getting the spec right. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that really changes is, uh, is materials. So, I mean, you know, if, if, you, if you want a chromoly cage, you have to get something that's a homologated cage, paperwork through custom cages or, or something similar like that. You know, welding T45 is a whole other ball game compared to making stuff. You have to TIG it. It takes a lot longer. So there are certain costs that spread things about. The way we usually like to do our cages is we like to do mild steel. It's a stronger you know, in my mind, it's, a, it's a, a stronger way to go. It's an easier way to go. You can make it, it keeps cost cheap um, relatively, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you go at it, you know. So yeah. that, that's where the cost breakdown gets, gets a little different. A lot of places will still do T45. T the T45 cages that we're putting in, but those are coming directly from M Sport. Right. So okay. those have been computer designed and stress tested and yeah. load tested, and they adjust all the angles and they get, ooh, try this there, ooh, try that there, put a 2000 load on the roof, you know, whatever. All in the software. All computer yeah. And then and that roll cage gets shipped to us. It's already cut, it's already notched, it's already bent, and they're all labeled. Yeah. And we have a certified welder who just do, 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 right. puts and, it and together like it. Legos. Like but, puzzle piece. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do now is um, we went on. Obviously, we're on Facebook. You are? Yeah. <laughs> we are. Um, and we asked these guys uh, some, to ask you guys some questions about getting started in rallying. All right, so Keith Bertel asks, what should you focus on for car mods to get a car ready for autocross, rallycross, if you've got a really limited budget? Now, you wrote a piece once that I read about using road signs to, like... Uh, yeah, I wrote a bit for <laughs> ITS Tactical that was about basic car prep. Yeah. And it basically said tires. Okay. If you're going to go rally crossing, your normal streetcar tires probably aren't going to be the best, you know, whatever's on your car. Yeah. So do something about that. You can find any team that's actively rallying in America or anywhere else is going to have a pile of half-used rally tires around. What? You got any half oh, no. rally yeah, tires? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. never. <laughs> How much do you sell your takeoffs for? Uh, it varies. It depends. It depends on obviously what they are. You know, if they're Michelin. Yeah. Or, yeah. You well, know, fifty bucks. Or D Mac. Or well, now whatever. they're worth a hundred bucks more because they've been on this show. So. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gonna want the ones. Autograph that These one. are huge. Yeah. These are gonna be big. But there's little ones. There's big ones. There's used rally tires are really easy to find. Yeah. You could usually. 
I, I traditionally usually buy like four for a hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. So, right. I mean, that's usually like, if I have something really old, I sell it for, you know, 50 bucks for a set of four or something like that. Something that's not like quite, you know, most of the stuff that we have as takeoffs for sure is not good for stage rally anymore. Right. What you're sitting on are wasted tires. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. We so, call those junk. Yeah. That's why I'm But they'll on. last you a full season of rally cross or more no problem. And yeah. if I'm sitting on them, just an entire season of afterdrive. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so the good thing about that, well, the, really the good thing is you got to, the, the, it's the community part, right? So yeah. you, it's harder to do it alone. Rallying, the, it, it seems to me it's harder to do it alone than it is to do it inside the community of rallying. So yeah. getting to know guys like you, yeah, getting to know the rest of the other people that are in it, um, there's a lot of helping each other. Kind yeah. Of. yeah, yeah, always. I mean, this weekend was insane. There was... How many oh, I mean, we're all running in and out of each other's vans, stealing tools and parts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's normal. I mean, but I mean, even just like the the amount of transmissions that blew this weekend. People yeah. that had clutch problems and yeah. people that had accidents. I mean, um, one of my old cars, uh, my friend John Kramer bought for me, was my open class car for the 2010 season. He bought the car for me, put a full 2.5 RS drivetrain back in it to make it an open light car, and he's been running it as an open light car for the last two years. And uh, he rolled it last year at STPR, light rollover. And then he rolled it this light weekend. Rollover. Yeah, <laughs> light rollover. Uh, he rolled it this weekend. And, um, you know, the guys went at it overnight. And some local shop down the street, this guy, Brandon West, has a, a place uh, that, you know, has, he just has, he's like me. He's like a Subaru parts hoarder and just has all his stuff. So we just went down there and fixed it up and grabbed a bunch of whoever can help. And, you know, there's people staying at the fairgrounds overnight, changing transmissions and clutches and all this stuff that, and nobody had spare transmissions or spare clutches or anything. Everybody's calling junkyards and you know, everybody was helping each other out. Well, so you bring up an interesting point, sleeping overnight at the oh, yeah. site, right? So, I mean, there are a couple of different ways to, so if you're gonna go rallying, right? right. You could either get a hotel room mm-hmm. or you could get a sleeping bag and sleep in your race suit or whatever, or yeah. just take yeah, your you race camp suit out, yeah. Yeah. Just camp out. So. Yeah. There are ways to save costs on the whole thing because oh, yeah. how much do you think it would cost if you were going to go to say three rallies a year um, if you have your own car already? Let's say you've got if you've your, got a cheap car, yeah, that, a car that's cheap to run. It doesn't need race gas. Right. It doesn't right. need you four pump. sets of tires for each event. Right. If you had a you know a Fiesta or an older Volkswagen or even a little Subaru or something like that. Yeah. I mean, entry fees, it depends. If you go look at what events are closest to you and whether it makes sense to get a Rally America license based on where their events are or a NASA license based on where their events are. Right. You know, if you live in New York, I hate to say it, but NASA probably makes the most sense. Yeah. There's how many rallies within six hours of you? Four? Like three or four, yeah. Three or four. So. If I'm in New Hampshire, I'm probably going to get a Rally America license because right. it's different. So look at that. Um, NASA is cheaper to run. It's about half the price for the entry fees or something. Yeah, or more now. Or more now. I mean, which which is about how much? Um, NASA stuff usually around six, seven hundred bucks. But then you have you know like early bird entry stuff for like Rally America regional stuff, which could be a five hundred dollar entry. The regional stuff could be five hundred bucks to to enter a national Rally America event. It's about two grand. Okay. If you're running, if you're like running running this car, if you're trying to do this, your you know entry fee for for a national entry is right way up. So if but you're going to do, I mean, you could do, theoretically, you could do like three rallies a year for about, what, three grand? If you're, Probably. If you're staying there, including three like to five. three to five with tires yeah. and... Um, three events? If your car is cheap yeah. to run, if you're not burning race gas and you're not putting fresh tires on, you know, every service, mm-hmm. which with a two and you're doing little regional events, uh, you're not entering well, national and you're not doing anything crazy. Well, well, let's. Well, I mean, say once, you have, once it, you have the once you have the car, yeah. right, right. But uh, now I'm curious. See, now it's really <laughs> curious. Oh, you mean <laughs> there's a problem? The, 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 see, the Baja bug. See, let's is, say uh, I've got a car which doesn't you, burn race gas, doesn't yeah. even come close. You do. Yeah. Which I do. <laughs> uh, and so, like, how much would I budget? How much would I budget one for a cage? How much you would could, I budget for you tires? You could probably do six rally crosses and three rallies a year. Would be a great beginner season. Right. Go do four or five rally crosses, go to a rally. And then yes. in between rallies, go to a rally crosses on the weekends because they're 50 bucks a day. Right, right. Um, and you're not going to wear anything out. Yes. And then, you know, find a co-driver, like I said, while you're doing that and put a skid plate under it and get better tires on it and do the suspension and put the roll cage in. Don't get in. too much left. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
It's a rule. <laughs> it's a it's blood a flaps rule. It's a blood it's a rule. Unfortunately, but, but that's a good I've question. I already put a rock through one of my. It's <laughs> already. Yeah, well, what is it? Co- I mean, what would it? What's about the cost of a, of doing a roll cage on a, on a like a, a car like the R? You know, something like the design of that particular cage, doing mild steel and a MIG is thirty five hundred bucks. Okay. So. And you're going to amortize. Hopefully, you know, if the car survives, it's going to amortize it over a number of seasons. Yeah, of course. I mean, and, and that's the thing. Like for instance. My old car that's now two years old at SDPR. Yeah. It was fine. They patched <laughs> it together Saturday, Friday night. They ran all day Saturday. Unfortunately, they blew a motor. They had a spun bearing. But it, uh, you know, basically just uh, you can use the cars over and over again. I mean, yeah. it, you know, most people that do have a rollover issue, you know, might just have something very slight, you know, something like that. Oops, I caught a stump or I, I cut a corner and caught the inside and just... A, a, sw- a slow roll one over you know usually it's just a little bit of banging out some bodywork with a hammer yeah. and you know put a new piece of glass in it and you're back out on you know running yeah it really doesn't take much and we could do it overnight i mean yeah. the same thing happened with my fiesta last year somebody rented my fiesta rolled it on the super special at stpr fixed yeah. it overnight you went out and ran the next day yeah. so i mean it's pretty common i mean the big rollovers the stuff you see on youtube and that that's pretty rare yeah okay yeah. He, I, I got one all right here's a question from adrian tello is it true you should rally something you hate when searching for a rally car are you better off finding a beater or starting out with the nicest example you can find as a kind of two different hate. questions i mean rally something you're I, I mean i think by hate he like probably something, means you something you're really not something, something you're not to, attached yeah. to. right exactly. yeah yeah now nah, go out rally everything Rally, Whatever. it doesn't matter. I mean, it's like yeah, a car it's that not you're like not picking a prom flip. date. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> the, the the last thing that you should do is be worried about your paint job or your stickers or whatever too much before you go out. It's yeah. Your first few rallies. Yeah. You know, if the bumper cover's got some zip ties holding it on and whatever else. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, pretty there, normal. There's <laughs> definitely better places to spend your money. So like number eighty-seven there <laughs> would be right, perfect exactly. for a first rally car. I don't know, man. Zip ties are cool. No. People like those zip ties. People like them, but um, oh, if you're using color zip ties, <laughs> I can't use the black ones. <laughs> Neon green. Yeah. Okay. Here, here's uh, this is a an, an obvious question: rear wheel drive or front wheel drive to start? <laughs> Depends who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it there's a good, really there's a good does. answer, yeah. I think it's a character um, thing, for Is sure. it really a character thing? It definitely is a yeah. character thing. I know some guys that do really well in rear-wheel drive and they will never get into a front-wheel drive car in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at everything as a feeder to, okay, well, wh- what's your motivation? Yeah. Do you want to get really good? Do you want to one day get into one of these cars? Do you want to one day start winning rallies and all of this stuff? Um, go front-wheel drive because you have to learn left foot braking and carrying your speed through corners and have really good lines and unload the suspension over bumps and get it really good with your co-driver and you'll be going a lot faster. Yeah. Rear wheel drive is a wicked good time. A lot more fun. <laughs> it's a lot more sideways. The photos look cool. The spectators are out there, they but love you're it. not. Yeah, I mean, you're rooster tailing. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah it's, you're it's, rah, 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 through <laughs> the whole thing, but the guy in the little Fiesta is rah, 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 gone. Right. And right. they're Way, way faster. Than I mean, we had of one of cars. our cars finished fourth overall yeah. at the rally this weekend, and that's a 1.6 liter front wheel drive, no turbo. Wow. I'm just going to put it out there. Little exception with that driver. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's got a good driver, but. Good. <laughs> but he ta- started out involved. front wheel drive, and he's been working with his co driver for a yeah. long time, and he takes everything very seriously. Very. He's out before each stage checking the suspension and making a little, ooh, a little more high speed bump yeah. for this stage because I know it's going to be rougher. Ooh, a little more of this or well, that. Well, so the more hands on you are anyway. So that's kind better, of a, better off you That's are. the thing about rally. I mean, I, mean, I guess it's, it's the thing about tracking any car, yeah. right? Or doing anything. Yeah. Is that so, or doing anything. Doing yeah. anything. And the more yeah. hands on, the more you know yeah. about how the thing works and how to. You know how to how to fix a tie rod if you if it. You it's know. just the more you care. I right. mean, if you really care, you'll learn. Yeah, yeah. If you if you really give a crap and that's what you want to do and this is you know your goal and you're like I want to be the rally guy, you'll end up. Yeah, I mean maybe you can't rebuild a motor. Sure, maybe you can't rebuild a transmission. Fine, but yeah. if it starts making a funny noise, oh yeah, that's just the exhaust rubbing on the diff. But I'm not worried about that. <laughs> yeah, but you right. can tell, ooh, that's a wheel bearing, and if I don't do this, I'm gonna slow I mean, down. I a perfect or example of out. somebody like that who just had no knowledge and went and did it because of just pure desire, Caswell. Yeah, sure. sure. I mean, he's a prime example of that. Well, that's a good question. Somebody asked that. Should you just go pull a Caswell and, and you know, just throw yourself into it, you know, with both feet and both hands? 
Maybe not in his style, but sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Me personally, I, when it comes down to just like uh, what we were talking about with the hands-on stuff, if you're looking at getting into a rally car, there's a lot of benefits to buying somebody's old rally car and moving into that right away. It's already built. You can just get on stage sometimes. A lot of them, depending on who you're buying it from, depending on how long it's been sitting, what the condition is, a lot of times you inherit other people's issues, mm -hmm. which yeah. then in return, you're like, oh, cool, this guy's only selling this for three grand. It comes with a bunch of spares, blah, 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 blah. It last ran in 2008 or 2009. But then you get into other expenses. Right. You know what I mean? You go, oh, well, the car doesn't run. It's got an electrical thing. It was sitting too long. There's some mice in there. They chewed up all the wires. There's no ECU. They walked away with it. Well, at the, the grassroots level, you're always going to have to do stuff. And either you're going to do it or you're going to pay somebody else right. to do it. And that's where yeah, I like to say building your car is a better way to go. Mm -hmm. It might be a tad bit more expensive than going out and buying somebody else's car. Yes, for sure. But, and this is where he's going to start yelling at me. I can hear him. <laughs> but you, you learn that hands-on experience. You get intimate with the car. You know exactly what's done to the car. You know the last time you tore apart the transit, the last time you tore apart the motor, the last time you did an oil change on the thing, the last time you did this with suspension, that. You, did, you know, and like, for me always, and I've been the guy, and I should have been that guy a long time ago that just went and bought a car, mm -hmm. I've always built my own cars. But there's a reason why I, we're sitting here right now and why, because I build my own cars. Right. So. Now, why do you, uh, you have a different point of view on that? No, no, no. <laughs> it's not a different point of view. It's it's a little tricky because it actually sort of raises the next thing, which is if you're rally crossing a car, you can be working on the roll cage while you do it. You can have your skid plates going. You can be dealing with suspension. So, I mean, instead of Caswell already had been racing different stuff for a while, and he already was kind of a mechanic for a while, self-taught. Um, but, I mean, jump into it both feet not knowing anything might be a mistake. So it's, again, go back to... You know, go to rally school, start doing rally crosses, oh, yeah. set up, you know, so that in the future, yeah, you know, okay, in six months, I'm going to do my first rally. Great. You get that little Forester out there. And, you know, while you're rally crossing, you're learning how to change brake pads, you know, how to, you know, make sure your lug nuts are tight, how to swap your suspension, how to change your oil, how to do, you know, rear differential bushings, how to swap an axle, you know, even if it's not broken. Um, you know, you can put the thing on the jack stands, you know, take the front axle out, put the front axle back in, put it all back together. People do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like the rally guys that practice, you know, between the driver and the yeah, co-driver. They can practice. swap a tire in yeah. two minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know, where, you know, Joey off the street tries to swap a tire, it might take him 10 minutes. Who yeah. knows? Um, so the learning curve, it, it's really, you've got to climb that learning curve no matter what it is. But in this specifically, I mean, you could climb the learning curve while you're doing yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. make so it progressive for yourself. And it's yeah. a great way, like like we're saying too. I mean, you know, whether you're going to rally crosses, run rally crosses, or you're volunteering for rallies just to be a spectator control. It's or like that's another the, question. The question yeah. is though, you can meet your where you're saying while you're you know, doing jump that. into it both feet. It's like, well, you know, if you can't speak German, don't move right into Germany, <laughs> into a German neighborhood, and try and figure it the hell out. It's the same thing, right. you know where you can be learning it a little and picking up pieces here. And then, you know, if, you, if you're like, oh, I got that, you know, go to the next chapter in your book or whatever yeah, it yeah. is. But it's the same type of ideas, learning a new language, you know, yeah. or Caswell definitely, you know, he <laughs> did his thing. But yeah. uh, well, he already could do it a little, you know? Yeah, right. So he had a little bit of a base and he, yeah, he right, just blew exactly. it out because he's yeah. Caswell. Right. And not everybody is, is Caswell. So yeah, right. that's the way it goes. But so you were talking about... Um, Volunteering, so a lot of right. people were asking about whether you can volunteer as a track mar or a, yeah. a stage so, marshal or something like so that. So I heard a little while ago from a buddy of mine that there was going to be a rally 90, min 90 minutes out of New York City. So this was earlier this year. And okay. I was just like, oh, I'll go and uh, I'll just sort of see what there is to see. So the first day I went and I just stood on a corner and it was great. You know, yeah. I had a great time, you know, cars going sideways, loved it. But then the next day I showed up and I, you know, one of the guys there was just like, you know, you should volunteer. And so I was like, all right, you know, how, yeah. how hard Where can do I it do be? That? Yeah. So then I go up the next day and was just like, I'd like to volunteer. And they were like, you know, sign this waiver. and Here's your wristband. <laughs> get your wristband. And didn't uh, even get a wristband. <laughs> oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. they just, I mean, they, so all they had me do was, uh, was watching, I was watching driveways. Yeah. So, you know, it's on public roads. 
So, you know, somebody who lived there maybe didn't hear... Just to, just to touch in on that, it's a tarmac rally. So this is a tarmac rally. It's the rally. only tarmac rally in North America. Well, I should say the U.S. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, so... You can so, carry on from there. That's so the, why there's driveways that need to be blocked. Right. But. So the moral of the story is that I signed up and I volunteered, and I got, you know, not, not only did I get to meet all the people who were there who were all good people, but I also got to, you know, stand on the side of the road as opposed to sort of stand sort of... Behind people. With the, behind people. Behind people. And, I mean, which was great. I mean, because people are cracking jokes about who's oh, driving yeah. bad. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but when you're, you can volunteer and you can get like right out there. And then yeah. you meet people and then. It's better I mean, spectating to volunteer. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's always better Agreed. to volunteer. That is actually how I actually got in rally. I've always been interested in rally. I grew up in a family that worked for Peugeot North America. Um, so I was always. As a little kid growing up, I was always exposed to Peugeot. When there was a Peugeot North America. Right, when there was a Peugeot North America. <laughs> and I was, always, I was always exposed to, you know, WRC from back then. And, you know, that, as a little kid, I thought that was the coolest thing, mm -hmm. to see cars go sideways at ridiculous speeds. And I said, you know, that's what I want to do someday. And then, of course, as a little kid, when Peugeot moved out of the country, I thought rally went away, too. And I didn't discover it again until... <laughs> I read this little tiny article in like Road and Tracker, yeah. Car and Driver, about a Subaru 22B. And it was an article about this big, and it started saying rally. And I go, wait a minute, whoa, there's rally still? I didn't know this existed still. I so, thought it died in 1987. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought it died in 90 when, you know, Peugeot pulled out of the country. So, you know, I, I had no clue. And I, I instantly started doing research again to find out about rally stuff and I, I fell in love obviously with the Subaru and that was the first thing I bought was a 2.5 2 RS. Three months after I bought my car, uh, I went and volunteered for my first rally. Never had been to a rally cross, never had autocross, I'd never raced anything in my life at that point. So I was like 19 years old or something like that mm. and I know that I wanted to go racing and rally was my thing, I wanted to do that. But I went and volunteered for the first event I ever went to. A bunch of my friends were like, hey, we're going to go to this race, too. Do you want to come and volunteer? And I did that, and it, it turned into this big monster. I mean, we went from volunteering at rallies to volunteering to work as crew members for teams, um, you know, volunteering to tow people's stuff around the country. I mean, it, it, there's so many different elements of it that you can really get yourself involved in. You know, if you just you, want to be organizational and you can do yeah. this, or you Anybody want to be a crew who guy has or a sort of any experience, or, if you've got some marketing experience, call Rally America and yeah. they'll say, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, you live in Pennsylvania, we're putting on this rally in a month, you know, help us do some local marketing stuff, help us do this, help us do that. Yeah. Um, and then when you show up, you already know them, they already know you, let's put a little vest on, you go do your thing. Um, there's the sweep guys, the sweep guys are great. <laughs> the guys wow, who yeah, follow yeah. after the rally cars, they're usually like off road clubs. Or oh, uh, with like the ATVs guys with and trucks, no, trucks, no, big, trucks big winches, trucks. Oh, toe with straps, the big, with those the real like big. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. you know, all the rally cars go, and then sweep guys go through, and yeah. they're usually they they're <laughs> they're faster than probably about the back third of the field. Yeah, and they're um, like you know heavy duty, oh, like Land yeah. Rovers and all and kinds of stuff. big trucks. Yeah, and and meet those guys and those. Guys they're move, they're hauling them out through the road, and then they just pull out everybody who's crashed. Right. So a lot of the guys with yeah. trucks love doing that. Yeah. They do it every year. And they're like, yeah, you know, yeah. we could use another truck to come out here, whatever. Uh, so there's like a million Then ways. you get to see all the crashes and pull people out of the woods. <laughs> and you get <laughs> to drive right. all of the roads. Yeah, right. that's fantastic. And so it's sort of like Recce, which is, yeah. we haven't talked about the actually... You like the, yeah. the how to do a rally? Mechanics yeah, right. of how yeah, to do yeah, a rally. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a whole like another that's, show. Yeah. That's once you're in though. Yeah. 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 This show's about how to get in. Yeah, right? exactly. we're not. This is that's how to crack it. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, about yeah. how to make an omelet. Right, later. exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how did you get into it? I ended up living in northern New Hampshire when I got my license at 16. Uh, when my birthday is in February. Okay. So February in New Hampshire <laughs> was interesting, and so I was like driving a full-size Ford Bronco in the snow and that was great great fun and then uh, this guy named tim o'neill owned a garage in town oh. and i knew that he's an old rally guy and he used to raise volkswagens and this and that so i got to know him basically stopped by the garage hey what's going on you poke your head in the shop uh you know i'm looking for a car because i was driving my mom's bronco uh -huh. and i needed to buy a car so it turned into buying an Audi 4000 oh, Quattro. Great car. Those were fantastic. Locking center diff, locking rear diff, no ABS, no tires, like 800 bucks or something, ready to go. And I just bounced off of things that whole winter. 
and uh, figured out they need a driving school. That It was interesting because our thing was to go out late at night when it was snowing, yep. when there's nobody on the road. There's four inches of snow, it's snowing hard, nobody's out there at midnight except maybe a plow truck. Right. So we'd always go out and thrash around and crash into stuff, and I'd be stuck in a snowbank like trying to shovel myself out with a snowshoe I had in the trunk. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you hear this like, <laughs> next thing you know, there's just snow and car and lights and stuff and everything else, and O'Neill's there. <laughs> He's like, what the hell did you do? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I'm just go fast in the corner in the snow and uh, fun. <laughs> but he could, he could like walk you back up the road, look at your tracks and say, oh, no, no, no. Look, you had the brakes locked up. And you're probably looking over here at that tree where you ended up. And you should have been looking around the corner. And yeah, if this happens, let off the brakes a little bit. And, you know, don't turn too much, but, you know, let off the brakes and turn and you'll make the corner. And then you pull me out and whoa, 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 you take off. And I'd be like, oh. Is this guy. <laughs> yeah, this uh, guy. So that actually happened a couple of times. It was pretty funny. So I figured out, you know, that was when he was starting the rally school and he had bought that piece of property uh, and he was doing a little bit of training out there for guys. So I was, I started out like cutting the grass there after school. And, you know, that summer, you know, between when I was, what, my junior year, my senior year of high school or something, I was working there driving the water truck on the track to keep the dust down and stuff cool. like that. And it's, uh, you know, the rest is history, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And you, your rally uh, career is as, is as nascent, yet, as they say. Yet to begin. Yet, yet, yet to begin. Yet to blossom. Yet to blossom. We'll you see will what be happens. our <laughs> guinea pig. <laughs> I, I mean, I make him do first. <laughs> hmm. Rally across the Baja. Bar? I think you need hmm. to have him do a, a rail grind in a uh, rail slide oh, in the Baja. <laughs> Baja Bar? Oh God. <laughs> I mean, I just started watching, you know, YouTube videos of just like. I don't even know what, just like guys going sideways, and I was yeah. just like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And, yeah. Um, uh, then I bought a, a terrible old Volkswagen. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see how that <laughs> And then I went to, then I volunteered at a rally, and I was yeah. just like, this how, is. It's how it all begins. It's, yeah. it's, it's infectious. Yeah. yeah. So, so right, if we were going to boil it down, three next steps if somebody wants to start. And they're starting at zero? And they're starting at, like, ground zero. Select... Nothing. Yeah, if, they, if they've got a low budget and they want to work their way up, you know, pick what kind of car it is that you want to drive and go get one. Get a cheap one. Okay. Get the car. Um, rally cross. Rally cross. Join, Vol join volunteer a, a rally. We have volunteer the car. a rally. Find a mechanic buddy. All right, wait a minute. How many? <laughs> <laughs> if you're so not that's a mechanic. Three. <laughs> if you're not um, a mechanic, you know, hit on your brother-in-law or somebody yeah, that's... Which uh, I am not, for the record. Yeah. So you need to figure somebody, your friends yeah. with you a lot of You've got to find a co-driver that's a mechanic. If you have a mechanic. Volkswagen, you don't have to be a mechanic. You can just... Like that's fall the engine, engine is right and there. Yeah. The yeah. Hit it with a monkey wrench and it'll run again. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. So the car. So, so get a car and be familiar with it. Acquire the vehicle. Acquire a vehicle. Be familiar with it, or have somebody who's can work on it with. Yeah. You. Find rally crosses. Find rally crosses and and join SECA or NASA or whatever right. is around you. Get to a, a rally cross and do it. Just do yep. the research. Yeah. See if NASA makes the most sense. If yeah. whatever. Um, volunteer at an actual rally and. At simultaneously, maybe go to a, a rally school at, of some like like yeah. Team O'Neill. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, uh, I've never been to officially a rally school, so I mean, there are ways you can go about it. But I mean, I I don't go to the school. I know a lot of the guys there. Right. Um, you know everybody there. So you know through the experience again, and and it's it's all from being at the rallies. You know, I started volunteering, started meeting people. I mean, I think I met Tim and. 2001 or two probably I mean I've known Tim for a long time and you know you just you meet all these key people you know and yeah. they're all willing to help you I mean there's not one person in North American rally that I can think of that is gonna be like oh screw you you know <laughs> I don't want to help you yeah I don't want to talk to you <laughs> yeah we don't Everybody need another person loves doing this, helping you know? each other yeah. out I mean it's part of the it's part yeah. of the rally spirit it's part of how rally is I mean you come I mean even the fans you know, you go to a rally, it's not like going to an ALMS race. You can walk right up to David Higgins. You can walk right through the You pits. can walk right up to Ken Block, for the yeah. most part, and go, hey, I really like you. Can I get an autograph? Can I get a picture? Can I talk to you for five seconds? Yeah. You know, and, and pretty much nobody's going to turn you away, even at that higher level. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you meet all these key people, and, and, and everybody's always willing to help you, whether it's mechanical stuff driving ability, you know, whatever it may be. So, I mean, for me, I've never been to a rally school. Through the years of being there in, in rally. You've wrecked a lot of cars. <laughs> 
I haven't run a lot of cars. <laughs> no, no. Just just the one, and I lost okay. the brakes, and then I lost third gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third gear. I lost third gear, and then I, I lost, lost the, the brakes. brakes. I found some excuses. And pulled it up. Yeah. You know, it yeah. happens. But I, I, so. I've learned. I've learned through you know where I've learned a lot of my knowledge, my driving knowledge is from helping teams out. Yeah. You know, you as could, a crew member. You could learn a lot on your own rally crossing before you even go to rally school. Yeah. So and then your time at rally school will be much better. Yeah. yeah. Cause if you can get from level zero to level three and you show up, we can go from level three to level six, easy. Yeah. And, and I think it's a great thing to still go to rally school. Right. I mean, I still need to go to rally school. I mean, there's, there's so much more for me to learn. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of experience as a driver. But I know for, for my personal goals, I mean, you know, you talk about guys that want to eventually be winning rallies. Yep. I mean, I, I've won a lot of rallies in my class, but I've never won a rally outright. I've never been the top of a super production class nationally or anything like that. So, I mean, that's a goal that I want to get to. And I know by going to school, that will help me. Right. You know, I'm not at that point in my driving career, but it will happen at some point. But it starts with, uh, you just got to be committed. I mean, you have yeah. to want to do it. I mean, it's like anything yeah. else. I mean, if you got to, what you said before, I mean, if it, you have to decide that it's but something you want to do. if you, you don't, do, maybe it's just you like doing rally crosses and, maybe and just that's enough. Up, stay with you, rally cross. You start doing rally crosses, you're having a blast on the weekends, and it's not too expensive, and you and your girlfriend can take turns driving, and it's a thing. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. The more people out there sliding around on dirt, the better. If you, if you fall in love with rally cross, you know, like you said, the perfect thing to do is go volunteer at a rally see how it works, hands-on, look at the stuff, see the organization, you get the schedule, you'll get all the info, um, almost as much as the competitors get, yeah. and say, you know, hey, we really want to do this. Yeah. Or, holy crap, this and is I, crazy. I want to do this. Just, just to key in on that again, another thing with volunteering for a rally, like he was saying, you get to drive the stages a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So you see the actual you roads. Mm -hmm. Like the rally this weekend, STPR, I've been working for 10 years, so when I go and race STPR, a little upper hand right. you know what I mean it's like you call it home you know the first one you go to the first one you volunteer for the first one you get you know enthralled with you absolutely fall in love with that's your home event yeah. you know so like you have this weird attachment to it and every year you want to go back to that same event and you know you, you learn it more and you learn you find more people and it's just it's a cool thing to go out and be able to drive the same stages as the people that you're looking up to and like yeah. your star drivers it's like wow this is so awesome times compared to theirs. <laughs> right yeah and then you go well, like, yeah. Mm, yeah. well that's true because you're out there i mean you know you could be out there on the same stage as a driver that you look up to yeah that never that doesn't happen in any other motorsport really. no i mean except not many you know, cart. I mean, you know, I karting many. maybe if, if a guy comes back down. And yeah. Right. Karting. But other than that, like you're out there on the same stage, maybe at the same yeah. event. And the best part is too, okay, if you say you've got an idol, you know, say it's David Higgins who had some hiccups this weekend, you know, or Ken Block who has hiccups, you know, hiccups any of those top guys. Are bad for, for driving. Yeah, you know, I mean, something you could have a flat tire, you could have. You hold your breath while you're. Oh, not actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have a broken, you know, broken suspension or a broken tie rod or something weird. Flat tires. Yeah. That puts you in the back of the pack. Yeah. As a top driver, so now all of a sudden you have you your new driver, Raph. You could be mm -hmm. in the back of the pack. With the hiccups. And guess who's behind you? Yeah. Mr. Ken Block. It happens. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, my first season, I, you know, every event that I was at for the first season that I was running with Ken Block, you know, he'd have a mechanical issue or something like that. He'd end up right behind me. And then you get out and you talk to him. You know, it's like, hey, like, what's up? You know? It doesn't happen in stock car racing. No. 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 You know, when you're out on a stage, you, you know, you get out in between. There's always a couple of minutes here and there where people just get out of the cars and hang out. And we're Wait. waiting for a stage to go live. And you're, you're literally behind. Ken Block is behind you on the stage. So you kind of freak out a little bit and go, oh my God, he's going to kill me as he <laughs> chases me down. But you get to hang out with him. Like you can't finish like a, a session on a track, pull over, and then Sebastian right. Vettel comes out from behind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he's like, hey, what's going on? And this like, happens yeah. on the WRC level too. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're, if you're a top level WRC guy, you're Sebastian Loeb, and you have that one mistake you had in 10 years, um, <laughs> you end up at the back of the pack. Yeah. And you're, you're back with two-wheel drive guys and new guys that are up That's and coming. That's the fun thing about know? going to uh, WRC Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Again, you go to the after party after the race. And, it's and we like, party oh, with, all those, we yeah. party with yeah. all of them. I yeah. mean, it's crazy. Yeah, that's what Caswell said. That was uh, a hell of a time. That was one of our yeah. greatest events, I think. 
It's one of the most fun it's, ones. It's yeah. one. It's one of the the top it's up, there. up there's. Yeah. I mean, we it's have too some, hot for me. We have some fun ones here <laughs> in the, here in the states that we always. I like we always, we always have some tricks. We always do, you know, some cars ended up in lobbies and stuff like that. You know, we're not going to mention too much of that. Yeah, but cars driving through hotels. Yeah, you know, it was some stuff. But, you know, I mean, we have fun wherever we go. But, I mean, it, it, there is a lot of weird elements like that that some people that are interested in rally or, you know, don't really, don't really know that stuff. You know, and the only way to learn that is, you know, get out Just and volunteer. Get out and do it. Just get out and do it. So get out and do it. That, uh, that's Bill Petro and White Knox and... Damn, Raphael or love of <laughs> that's my name. <laughs> and that's after drive. You heard it here. Get out and rally. Get out and do some of that rally cross stuff. But just take your mom's car, or or definitely rental car. Pull the ABS. Uh, yeah. Fuse on. Mm -hmm. Cool. See you guys next week. <laughs>